Not sleeping. Hmm. Fine. I know how to get you up. <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. Okay, okay. I'm not sleeping. Please, Cameron, stop it. <laughs> that worked as well as I thought it. <sighs> okay, Cameron. What is it? As I promised last night, I'll read you some more of the Thomas stories. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Come on, let's get started. All right, Blue Ready Joe. Let me just get into my seat, and then we'll get started. Here we are. Tonight, I'll be reading you the stories of the Troublesome Engines. Oh, Troublesome. Yep, that's correct. What are the stories that are in this set? I'm glad you asked, Miku. The stories in this set are Henry and the Elephant, Tenders and Turntables, Trouble in the Shed, and Percy Runs Away. Percy's our new character within this set. I think you might like him. I think I will like him very much. Well, with all that out of the way, let's get started with these stories. <clears throat> First up is Henry and the Elephant. Now Henry and Gordon were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They missed him very much. They had more work to do. They couldn't wait in the shed till it was time to find their coaches at the platform. Why? Coming to that right now. Now the reason for that is because they had to fetch them. Oh. Yeah, and they didn't like that. How come? You'll find out when we get to the next story. Okay then. Right. Anyways, Edward sometimes did odd jobs, and so did James. But James soon started grumbling too, so Tom and Hat kindly gave Henry and Gordon new coats of paint. Henry chose green. I guess people might have been confusing him with Gordon since they look almost identical. Yeah, you got that right, Miku. <clears throat> but yet, they still grumbled dreadfully. We, we get, get no, no rest. rest. We, we get, get no, no rest. rest. They complained as they clanked about the yard. But the coaches only laughed. You're lazy and slack. You're lazy and slack. They answered in a quiet, rude way. Those coaches are right. They are being lazy and slack. I'm glad that you agree with them. So do I. But when a circus came to town, the engines forgot they were tired. They all wanted to shunt the special freight cars and coaches. Well, it looks like that shut them up about complaining for having to shunt their own trains. Yep, sure did. <clears throat> But they were dreadfully jealous of James when Sir Tom had told him to pull the train when the circus went away. However, they soon forgot about the animals, as they had plenty of work to do. One morning, Henry was told to take some workmen to a tunnel that was blocked. He grumbled away to find two freight cars to carry the workmen and their tools. Pushing freight cars, pushing freight cars, he muttered in a sulky sort of way. They stopped outside the tunnel and tried to look through it. But it was quite dark. No daylight shined from the other end. That's a bit odd. It's a tunnel that goes straight through, isn't it? It is. But remember, it's blocked. Oh, right? The workmen took their tools and went inside. Suddenly, with a shout, they all ran out looking frightened. Huh? We went to the block and started to dig, but it grunted and moved, they said. Rubbish, said the foreman. It's not rubbish. It's big and alive. We're not going in that again. Right, said the foreman. I'll ride in a freight car and Henry will push it out. Weesh, said Henry unhappily. He hated tunnels. He had been shut up in one once, but this was worse. Something big and alive was inside. I remember 
remember that time when he'd been bricked up in there. But now this is something much more than just being punished to worry about. Beep, 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 he whistled. I don't want to go in. Neither do I, said his driver. But we must clear the lines. Oh dear, oh dear, puffed Henry as they slowly advanced into the darkness. Bump! Oh my! Henry's driver shut off steam at once. Help! Help! We're going back! wailed Henry. What's happening? And slowly moving out into the daylight came first Henry, then the freight cars, and last of all, pushing hard and rather cross, came a large elephant. An elephant? Yep, an elephant, Miku. <clears throat> Well, I never, said the foreman. It's an elephant from the circus. Henry's driver put on his brakes, and a man ran to telephone for the keeper. I wonder how it got away from the circus train when it went away? Eh, who knows. Anyways, meanwhile, the elephant stopped pushing and came towards them. They gave him some sandwiches and cake, so he forgot he was cross and remembered he was hungry. He drank three buckets of water without stopping and was just going to drink another when Henry let off steam. The elephant jumped and whoosh! He squirted the water over Henry by mistake. Poor Henry. Oh, Henry, it's only water! <laughs> Try telling him that in person. <clears throat> anyway, when the keeper came, the workmen rode home happily on the freight cars, laughing at their adventure. But Henry was very cross. An elephant pushed me. An elephant hooshed me, he hissed. He was sulky all day, and his coaches had an uncomfortable time. In the shed, Henry told Gordon and James about the elephant. And I'm sorry to say that instead of laughing and telling him not to be silly, they looked sad and said, You poor engine, you have been badly treated. Is that a bad sign, Cameron? I'm afraid it is, my little angel. It only gets worse when we get to the second story. The story that we're reading next is called Tenders and Turntables. Now, in this particular story, Miku, the big engines decide to do something rather dumb. What was it, my little one? Just listen to the story and you'll find out. <clears throat> Let's begin. Now the big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. Sir Top and Hat have made them so that Edward, Henry, Gordon, and James can be turned round. It's dangerous for Tender and is to go fast backwards. How come? Now the reason for that, Miku, is because the Tender blocks the driver's view. Now the driver and fireman can look out the cab, but then it puts them at risk of being hit by another train or objects along the tracks. Oh, I see. That makes sense. <clears throat> Anyways. Now, tank engines like Thomas don't need turntables. They can go just as well backwards as forwards. But if you had heard Gordon talking a short while ago, you would have thought that Sir Tom Hatt had given him a tender just to show how important he was. You don't understand, little Thomas, said Gordon. We tender engines have a position to keep up. You have a tender, and that makes a difference. It doesn't matter where you go, but we are important. And for Sir Tom Hatt to make us shun freight cars and fetch coaches and go on some of those dirty sidings, it's, it's, well, it's not the proper thing. And Gordon puffed away in a dignified manner. Free, that should mean anything. Thomas chuckled and went off with Annie and Clarebo. When he arrived at the terminus, Gordon waited till all the passengers got out. Then, groaning and grumbling, he shunted the coaches to another platform. Disgraceful, disgraceful, he hissed as he ran backwards to the turntable. Now, the turntable was in a windy place close to the sea. It was only just big enough for Gordon, and if he was not on it just right, he put it out of balance and made it difficult to turn. Today, Gordon was in a bad temper, and the wind was blowing fiercely. His driver tried to make him stop in the right place. Backward and forward they went, but Gordon wasn't trying. At last, Gordon's driver gave it up. The fireman tried to turn the handle, but Gordon's weight and the strong wind prevented him. The driver, some plate layers, and the fireman all tried together. It's no good, they said at last, mopping their faces. Your tender upsets the balance. 
If you were a nice tank engine, you'd be all right. Now you have to pull the next train backwards. Well, that's what he gets for being difficult. Gordon came to the platform. Some little boys shouted, Come quick, here's a new tank engine. Oh, what a swizz, they said when they came near. It's only Gordon back to front. Gordon hissed emotionally. He puffed to the junction. Hello, called Thomas. Plain tank engines? Sensible engine. Take my advice, scrap your tender and have a nice bunker instead. Gordon snorted, but didn't answer. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, hissed Gordon. You might stick too. No fear, chuckled James. I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James anxiously as he ran to the turntable later. He stopped on just the right place to bounce the table. It could now swing easily. His fireman turned the handle. James turned, much too easily. The wind puffed him round like a top. He couldn't stop. At last, the wind died down, and James stopped turning. But not before Gordon, who had turned on the loop line, had seen him. Whoa, whoa, he said. Are you playing roundabouts? Poor James, feeling quite giddy, rolled off to the shed without a word. Seems like James didn't have such a good ride. He sure didn't, Miku. Having to spin around like that so fast, you pretty much would have likely spew up. You! Harry, did you really have to? Sorry, sorry, I'm terribly sorry. I shouldn't have even mentioned that word. It's okay, I forgive you. Just don't say that again, please. All right, all right, Miku. Let's just get back to the story. <clears throat> that night, Henry, Gordon, and James had an indignation meeting. It's shameful to treat tender engines like this. Henry gets hooshed by elephants. Gordon goes backwards and people think it's a tank engine. And James spins around like a top. And everyone laughs at us. And added to that... So it's all from our mix of shots and dirty sidings. Ugh, <sighs> said all three engines together. Listen, said Gordon. He whispered something to the others. We'll do it tomorrow. So Top of Hat will look silly. This is not good. You're right, Miku. And once again, like I said, it only gets worse when we get to the next story. Speaking of which... <clears throat> this story is called Trouble in the Shed. Now, what the three big engines have done is simply they've gone on strike. On strike? That's right, Miku. You'll find out why once we start the story. <clears throat> Sir Tom Hatt sat in his office and listened. Sir Tom Hatt frowned and said, What a nuisance passengers are. How can I work with all this noise? The station master knocked and came in, looking worried. I wonder what's wrong. There's trouble in the shit, sir. Henry is sulking, there is no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said Sir Tom Hatt. We cannot allow that. Will you calm the passengers, please? I will go speak to Henry. He found Henry, Gordon, and James looking sulky. Come along, Henry, he said. It's time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon rudely. We won't shunt like common tank engines. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. And all three engines let off steam in a cheeky way. Oh boy, these three are just being ridiculous and are just acting like children. Mm-hmm, they sure are. <clears throat> oh, indeed, said Sir Tom Hatt severely. We'll see about that. Engines of my railway do as they are told. He hurried away, climbed into his car, and drove to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those trucks, please, Edward. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine, says Sir Tom Hatt kindly. Off you go, then. Let's hope they all stop their foolishness and do some work from now on. And so, Edward found coaches for the three engines. And that day, the trains ran as usual. But when Sir Tom Hatt came the next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said Sir Tom Hatt. What a noise. They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward sadly. 
They say tender engines don't shunt. And last night, they said I have black wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? Wow, well, how do you like that? One day you find someone to help and everything goes back to normal. The next day, they don't give as much as a thank you. Poor Edward, he doesn't deserve this kind of treatment. Indeed, he doesn't, Miku. <clears throat> no, Edward. You have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do so. But all the shame, you'd be happier in your own yard. We need a tank engine here. So he went to an engine workshop, and the workman showed him all sorts of tank engines. There were big ones and little ones. Some looked happy, and some looked sad. And some looked at him anxiously, hoping he would choose them. At last, he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, said Percy happily. So this is our Percy? Yep, this is our Percy, Miku. <laughs> a small green saddle tank engine. He looks rather cute, I must say. <laughs> Percy will blush if you said that to him. <laughs> <clears throat> so, he bought Percy and drove him back to the yard. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Soon, Percy learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Once, Henry came by hissing as usual. Weesh! said Percy suddenly. Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. <laughs> How beautifully you weeshed him, laughed Edward. I can't weesh like that. Oh, said Percy modestly. That's nothing. You should hear them at the workshop. You have to weesh loudly to make yourself heard. All I can say about Henry when Percy did that is he most certainly deserved it. <laughs> he certainly did, Miku. He certainly did. <clears throat> Next morning, Thomas arrived. Sir Tom had sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said importantly to Edward. Shh, shh, here he comes. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Henry, Gordon, and James are soaking. They say they won't shut like common tank engines, so I have shut them up, and I want both of you to run the line. Common tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy will help too, said your Tom Hat. Oh, sir, yes, sir, please, sir, answered Percy excitedly. Edward and Thomas worked the line. Starting at opposite ends, they pulled the trains, whistling cheerfully to each other as they passed. Percy sometimes puffed along the branch line. Thomas was anxious, but both driver and guard promised to take care of any in Clarabelle. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Henry, Gordon, and James stayed shut in the shed, and were cold, lonely, and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly. Well, it serves them right for being childish and rude. Yes, it does serve them right. But... They're let out eventually. Oh, is that so? Uh-huh. And it's in our last story, which is Percy Runs Away. Let's begin. <clears throat> now Henry, Gordon, and James were shut up for several days. At last, Sir Tom had opened the shed. I hope you are sorry, he said sternly, and understand you are not so important after all. Thomas, Edward, and Percy have worked the line very nicely. They need a change, and I will let you out if you promise to be good. Yes, yes sir, sir, said the three engines. We, we will. will. That's right. But please remember that this no shunting nonsense must stop. I agree. He told Edward, Thomas, and Percy that they can go and play on the branch line for a few days. They ran off happily and found Annie and Clarabel at the junction. The two coaches were pleased to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once. Evan and Percy played with the freight cars. Stop! 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 stop, stop. Screamed the freight cars as they were pushed into their proper sightings. <laughs> but the two engines laughed and went on shunting till the freight cars were neatly arranged. Next, Edward took some empty freight cars to the quarry, and Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the engines. Hurry! 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 He would call to them. Gordon, Henry, and James got very cross. After a while, he took some freight cars over the main line to another siding. When they were nice and neat, he ran onto the main line again and waited for the signalman to set the switches so that he could cross back to the yard. Now, Edward had warned Percy 
Be careful on the main line. Whistle to the signalman that you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle. And the signalman was so busy that he forgot about Percy. Oh dear, there's gotta be trouble for little Percy. Bells rang in the signal box. The signalman answered saying the line was clear and set the signals for the next train. Percy waited and waited, but the switches were still against him. He looked along the main line, and rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Oh no! Peep, peep, whistled Percy in horror. Poop, 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 whistled Gordon. His driver shut off steam and applied the brakes. Percy's driver turned on full steam. Back, Percy, back, he urged. But Percy's wheels wouldn't turn quickly. Gordon was coming so fast that it seemed he couldn't stop. They're gonna crash! With shut eyes, Percy waited for the crash. His driver and fireman jumped out. Duh! Groaned Gordon. Get out of my way! Oh, I can't look! Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. <sighs> oh, thank goodness Gordon didn't stop in time. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away. He puffed. He was soon clear of the station and running as fast as he could. He went through Elbert Station, whistling loudly, and was so frightened that he ran on Gordon's head without stopping. He was tired then, and wanted to stop, but he couldn't. He had no driver to shut off steam or apply the brakes. Oh, poor Percy. I shall have to run till my wheels wear out. He thought sadly. Oh dear, oh dear. I want to stop! I want to stop! He puffed in a tired sort of way. He puffed past another signal box. I know just what you want, little Percy, called the signalman kindly. He set the switches, and Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big mound of earth. Percy was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop! I want to stop! I have stopped, he puffed thankfully as his bunker buried itself in the mound. Thank goodness for that signalman. If he didn't switch Percy on that siding, Percy would have gone going and might have crashed. Yeah, you're right about that, Miku. Him. <clears throat> Anyways. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. I think so. Percy now works in the yard and finds coaches for the trains. He is still cheeky because he's that sort of engine, but he is always most careful when he goes on the main line. The end. So, how do you like these stories? They were very good. Much. Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Come on, I think we should get some sleep. I actually am feeling tired this time. Okay, Miku. Let me put the book up and then I'll come join you. Good night, Miku. <sighs> See you in the morning. <laughs> Here. Here we go in your favorite sleeping spot, my little one. My chest. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Sleep well, my blue-eared angel. You too, Cameron.